Hi, welcome back to Glow with Shelly. Today we're going to talk all about EGF and vitamin C. I've been getting so many questions about the EGF Ordinary Serum since I released my EGF video. Shameless plug for video there. And since I released that video, I had so many people commenting, but can you use EGF with vitamin C? I thought you couldn't. And I don't think you can use vitamin C with EGF. The Ordinary tells us on their website, don't use vitamin C. It could cancel out the benefits of your EGF. Let's decode the science behind why The Ordinary says no vitamin C and EGF. And we'll find out, can you really use vitamin C? And if so, what kind? All that and more. Let's get into it, science nerds. The Ordinary tells us we cannot use vitamin C with their serum. And they hinted the reason being that they don't want you to mix the two together on your skin. A lot of people have said, no vitamin C with EGF. I did a ton of research on this, trying to find out, does EGF and vitamin, are EGF and vitamin C incompatible? And technically they're not incompatible, but there are certain forms of vitamin C that just have pHs that are a little too acidic for EGF serum. And that told me everything I needed to know about why The Ordinary says no vitamin C with EGF. Let's talk a little bit about vitamin C. Vitamin C normally comes in the form of L azorbic acid. And L azorbic acid at a low pH, that's a pH of 3.5. That's highly acidic. Your skin, on the other hand, thrives at an environment of 4.5 to 6 pH. Guess what the Ordinary's EGF serum is? It's the same as most EGF serums. It sits at about a 6 to 7 pH. Mixing these two can actually result in degrading and reducing the efficacy of both the vitamin C and the EGF. Why? because they're just not pH compatible. Put on your EGF, you put on your vitamin C, and those mix, right? And that mixing will reduce the efficacy of both because it'll, it'll raise the pH of the vitamin C and it'll lower the pH of the EGF, which is essentially what The Ordinary says. They say, if you put on vitamin C directly after using this EGF, it will reduce its efficacy. It literally says that. I'd like you to look at some pH strips. <laughs> and then we're gonna do some pH testing. We're gonna have fun with science today. This is a strip that shows the pH of a vitamin C serum. And this vitamin C serum is actually the Cosorex Super Vitamin E and Hyaluronic Acid Serum. And if I'm looking on this test strip, I'm seeing that, yep, that pH is sitting at about a three to four. So we're looking at a good 3.5 pH, just like L azorbic acid is. And this vitamin C is 23% L azorbic acid. So if you're using something like SkinCeuticals or even the Timeless Vitamin C, you're going to be getting straight L azorbic acid. And that is going to be sitting at that very low pH, meaning that it's acidic. So because I don't like regular vitamin C, the L azorbic acid, I'd like to talk about the different kinds of vitamin C because there are actually a bunch of different kinds of vitamin C. You don't have to use L azorbic acid. So let's review vitamin C and talk about the different kinds of vitamin C and their pH levels. Okay, L azorbic acid, it is so highly effective. It's one of the most highly effective forms of vitamin C. It's found in most vitamin C serums because it's highly effective. But it's also unstable, right? See the dark bottle? It has to be in a dark bottle because it's highly unstable. Once it sees light, once it hits air, it starts to degrade. It's just, there's a lot of things to vitamin C and it has to maintain that very high acidic pH in order to be stable and to actually make changes to your skin. That is L azorbic acid. Now there's another form of vitamin C. Bet you didn't know that. It's called sodium asorbyl 
phosphate, otherwise known as sap. I like to call it sap because sap's fun. Um, sap is a gentler form of vitamin C and has a neutral pH. So this is one form of vitamin C that's going to be completely neutral. The reason it's neutral is your skin will have to convert it. It has to take it one step of conversion to get that active form of vitamin C that it can use. So it's much more gentle, used regularly. It can have profound vitamin C effects. It's also very protective, just like L-azorbic acid. And if you have the right ingredients with it, like vitamin E, you can actually boost the effect efficacy of sap. And the one that I really love is this Dayglo Serum by Soulceuticals. This is a Korean brand. It's a much gentler form of vitamin C. It contains ferulic acid, it contains hyaluronic acid, and it contains um, vitamin E. Okay, and it is my trusted brand of vitamin C, the only one I'll use because I cannot, I can only handle sap. So let's talk about the other forms of vitamin C because there's more than just those two. Right? There's also magnesium asorbyl phosphate as well. That's MAP. It's actually a little bit more acidic. It sits between that acid and neutral at about a 4 to a 4.5. It's great for the skin, right? Because your skin sits at that 4.5 to 6 pH. So it's really good for your skin. It tends to be a lot more hydrating. It's only slightly acidic. A lot of people really love it. Um, we call it MAP for short. Okay, and then there's um, azorbyl uh, glucoside, and that's actually got a neutral pH too, but it's gonna release a lot more gradually. It has more of a gradual release. If you want a vitamin C that you're wearing at night, okay, um, this would be a good vitamin C to, to put on at night. It's a very gradual release vitamin C. You're, it's not gonna be like flooding you with vitamin C, so it won't interact with your vitamin A if you do use tretinoin. Um, but it will slowly give you those benefits of vitamin A, a little bit higher cellular turnover, right? Some brightening effects, some tone and texture effects. Um, so it's a good one, right? If you want to um, also use, if you want to use it day and night. And then um, there's tetrahexyldesyl ascorbate. I know that's such a long word. Um, and we call this THD. And this is more of an oil solu soluble vitamin uh, C. You've probably seen this in some oil vitamin Cs. A lot of people love this. It's very stable. It stays stable for a long time because it's delivered in an oil instead of a serum. I think there's a, an ordinary vitamin C that is this form of vitamin C, but don't quote me on that. I'll have to go look. This derivative is gonna be gentle. I've never tested a, an oil in a pH strip. I don't know if that works. So chemist, does that work? Can you test pH from an oil? Should be able to. Okay. My husband was a chemistry person, so I have to ask him. Um, he said you should be able to. These are the vitamin C's, right? I really do prefer the sap vitamin C. Let's talk about the pH of sap because I have my pH strip here and I tested my Soulceuticals vitamin C and I got this pH. And if you look at the pH strip, this is a very neutral pH. Okay, so it sits at about a six pH just like the EGF serum. So when I look at these side by side, I see that the pH in these are very identical and they sit at the six to seven range on the pH scale. I'm going to put this on the screen though as well. So you can see it right there. Right, so you can see that the um, L-azorbic acid pH is a lot lower than the um, <clears throat> sap pH, right? And that sap pH will not interact or destabilize your EGF because it's at the same or a similar pH to your EGF. And that is why I really prefer to use sap in general, but that's why it's okay to use other vitamin C derivatives that are not L-azorbic acid with EGF, right? You're not going to break it down. You're not going to destabilize it. Vitamin C itself does not destabilize EGF. 
It is only the pH. In fact, I'm going to throw up an inkylet. This is an ordinary product from Ordinary, from Decium. The same company that does Ordinary, both great brands, science back. They have similar products to, to the Ordinary brand. They're the same company. They're the same abnormal beauty company. They're the same. They're owned by Decium. They don't do marketing just like Ordinary. So, and in this serum, they actually use absorboglucoside which has a neutral pH. Its pH is very similar to sap. As you can see, the pH in these does matter a lot. And this is really why people are saying don't use vitamin C with EGF. They do not mean that you cannot use vitamin C in EGF, that vitamin C interacts in some way with EGF because it doesn't. It's just that pH, right? You don't wanna reduce the efficacy of any of your serums. We pay money for these. We want to make sure that they really make a difference in our skin and make an impact. And so making sure that you choose the proper serums is going to go a long way to doing that. And when I mentioned in my video, I use vitamin C, I always use sap. I have never used allosorbic acid. So I didn't even think about mentioning it in my last video. But then when people were like, oh, you can't use vitamin C, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to explain this because you can. It's just, you have to be careful what kind to use. And being the science nerd I am, I was like, I wanna share the science with my viewers so they know too, because you wanna use that vitamin C because vitamin C does so much for your skin, right? Even tone, even texture, reducing fine lines and wrinkles, um, brightening your skin, protecting it from sun damage, from UV radiation, anti-oxidizing your skin, right? Clearing out free radicals. You want it on your skin. Just use the right one. Get this baby. You won't regret getting, like, honestly, I love this vitamin C. It's super cheap. It's $20. It's not expensive. It's about the same price as the Ordinary's vitamin C. Actually, it is the same price as the Ordinary's vitamin C. It's cheaper than Timeless. It's way cheaper than SkinCeuticals, and this vitamin C packs a huge punch, but it's so, so, so gentle. I love it. Love it. I've been using this. I have been using this religiously for like at least the last eight months, and I, I will not stop. I love it. You can use vitamin C in the morning with your EGF, right? You can do that as long as you're using the right one. But let's say that you want to continue using your l acid. Maybe you're using the Cosrx and you're like, I love this. It's the same price as SoulCeuticals, but I know it has more of an impact. I've always used vitamin C. I love vitamin C. It does benefits for my skin. You can use your EGF only at night then, okay? You don't have to use your EGF in the morning. If you do want to use your EGF in the morning, though, you're going to want to switch to a lower pH EGF or a lower pH vitamin C. It's just what you're gonna have to do. Otherwise, you're going to have to alternate them so that you don't reduce the efficacy of your vitamin C during the day when you wanna fight off that UV damage and those free radicals, and you won't reduce the efficacy of your EGF at night when you wanna really make it penetrate the skin and make those changes that you wanna see. You could also layer it differently. So even though they're very watery, like vitamin C is very watery and EGF is very watery. Normally you would put on your essence and then you would put on your EGF and then you would put on your vitamin C. You could also buffer it with like uh, your essence in between. So you could put the EGF on immediately and then you could put your, your, your uh, milky toner on and then you could just like let it absorb for five minutes and then you can put your vitamin C on and it probably won't as long as it's not mixing that's why the ordinary says direct directly after because as long as it's not mixing you're okay okay so there are ways to get around that guys I have done this myself plenty of times. I've waited 20 minutes before putting on my vitamin A so that my other skincare products will absorb if I'm using like copper peptides and I want my copper peptides to absorb, but I still want my vitamin A. Like I've done this a lot. It's okay. You can do that. You can wait for a few minutes. You can go blow dry your hair or I don't know, brush it, something. Wait a few minutes and then come back and do the rest of your routine. It's okay. So there you have it, debunking the science behind vitamin C and EGF. 
Oh, we do want to mention one more thing before I close out this video, and that is that I do feel like sap is very stable. So I don't, I don't mind L-Azorbic acid. Like I said, I can't use it because I'm too sensitive for it, but I mean, I think it's great option for people, but I will tell you that it's not very gentle. It's just not, um, this vitamin C is so much gentler and it's just, it just feels better on and it doesn't irritate your skin at all. And I think when, because like, I honestly think there are a lot of skincare products that are more pH neutral and can reduce the efficacy of vitamin C when you use it in multi-step routines. Okay, so if you do use azorbic acid, be aware that you may be reducing its efficacy period with any of your other serums just because they're going to be sitting at a much lower pH than the vitamin C is. Okay, uh, I just wanted to let you know that because a lot of people don't really consider the pH of their skincare products and it is something that you really need to think about when you're using your, if you're doing a multi-step product process because I use multiple serums and whenever you do use multiple serums you have to be aware of their pH levels and most of your serums are going to sit at a neutral pH except for your vitamin C's um, your uh, acids like glycolic acid lactic acid those things are going to sit at a lower pH but everything else is going to be at a little higher pH because it's it's designed for your skin right um, whereas the acids you can't have them at a higher pH. They won't be stable. That's all about pH and your skincare. In case you wanted to know, I got you covered. There you have it. That is the real truth behind vitamin C and EGF. And I hope that you are considering to con still continue to use your vitamin C with your EGF as long as you have the right one or you're buffering it. Are you thinking about switching to a sap of vitamin C? I did and I do not regret it. So there you have it. Use that EGF, use that vitamin C, make sure you think about that pH so that you get the right benefits from your skincare. Stay glowing, stay beautiful, and I'll see you next time on Glow Michelle.